welcome to another great Cimmerian documentary. This time, we will be covering the solar system. This is our planet, Kerbin. You can even see the great Cimmerian states from space. Kerbin has three major moons. First of all, you can see Gol. The Nemesis crater is still clearly visible from space. You can even see it from Kerbin. This crater was created during the impact event in 1204. The surface still hasn't cooled down, and inside the crater you can still see the magma. Gol itself is orbited by Nightmare. Nightmare was formed after the impact event. It orbits Gol extremely fast, and tidal forces are pulling it to its characteristic shape. Minmos hasn't been affected by the impact event at all. It has an inclined orbit around Kerbin. Our newest moon is called Ole. Ole has been captured in Kerbin's gravity field after the impact event. It's in a polar orbit beyond Gol and bigger than Minmos. Ole has a moonlet called Olemut. Scientists believe it contains liquid water, even though it has no atmosphere. Kerbin itself orbits a star called Kerbal. It is a main sequence star. The closest body orbiting Kerbal is called Moho, a small stone planet. Beyond that, there is Scorch. Scorch has an atmosphere, but the temperatures are extremely high. In addition to that, Scorch is tidally locked to the sun. The next planet is Eve. Eve contains a thick atmosphere. Scientists have not been able to tell what's beyond it. Eve is on the brink of the Goldilocks zone that enables liquid water to exist. It also has one tiny moon, Gile. We have already talked about the Kerbin system, which is next in the solar system. Beyond that, there's the two brother planets, Drydos and Niebos. These two planets share the same orbit, but are opposed to each other. Their orbit is slightly inclined, and both planets inhabit a ring system. Both planets also inhabit an atmosphere. Niebos seems to inhabit plant life and vast oceans. Drydos, on the other hand, is covered in deserts. Each of the two planets is also orbited by one small moon, Drydis and Nibetos. Moving on, the next planet in the system is Duna. Duna is a desert planet without a thick atmosphere. It's orbited by a comparably large moon called Ike. The next planet is called Solos. Solos is very similar to Kerbin. It has liquid water and a thick oxygen atmosphere. It has one moon called Soyuz. On Soyuz you can see the biggest volcano in the solar system. The next planet, Butai, is similar to Kerbin as well. However, it emits radio signals. It is unknown if these are being caused by an alien civilization or just from radioactive materials. Its moon Kippos is emitting radio signals as well. Scientists believe to have discovered plutonium deposits on the surface of Kippos, further solidifying the thesis that these radio signals are merely caused by radioactive radiation. Beyond the asteroid belt, the brightest star in the night sky shines. Olium is somewhere between a gas giant and a protostar. It has been getting brighter and brighter since the impact event. The theory is that the exoplanets which were entering our system also brought in more material that is now being absorbed from Olium. Many moons have been discovered around Olium. In theory, the Olium system is not inside the Goldilocks zone. 
However, volume itself emits a lot of heat. It has been proven that some of the moons in the Olium system actually contain an atmosphere and liquid water. One of the more interesting moons is Fume. To this day, it is unknown if Fume is just a tiny gas planet or a rocky planet with a very thick atmosphere. Another interesting moon is the most outside moon, Vulcan. It is very young and not 100% formed. You can still see magma on top of the surface. Moving on to the next planet, Joule, another gas giant. Joule only contains a couple of moons, most of them are just rocky. However, telescopes have discovered an atmosphere on the most inner moon, Leif. Beyond the Joule system, it is difficult to get clear images with our current technology. Quarter used to be a rogue planet flying through interstellar space. Before the impact event, Olimut and Ole used to orbit Quarter. But Quarter entered the Kerbin system with a high velocity. One of its moonlets crashed into gold. Ole and Olimut were captured by Kerbin's gravity. Quarter itself missed Kerbin. It slingshotted around the sun, scorching its surface. Then it was captured in the Kerbal system, outside Joule. Over the years, the gravity of Olum and Joule circularized the orbit and stabilized it. Further out, there are only a few more planets. There is Flak and Flake. Not much is known about these bodies. Then there is also Elu. Elu's orbit is shifted strongly. Barely any light reaches out to Elu, so the surface is probably covered in ice. In theory, there should be another planet in the system. Its gravity must have had a huge influence on the capture of Quarter. However, as of right now, we have not been able to detect this body. And that is our solar system. Hopefully one day we will be able to visit all of these planets. Until then, we must all work together for the Socialist Party of Cameria. Thank you for watching.